We need to be shielded. We need to be under the, the wings of our Lord, right? He tells me he's given his church the wings of evil eagles in the days ahead. And because something's coming on this planet right now, this warfare, this darkness is covering, this earth is getting crazy out there. I don't have to tell you about what's going on in the political realm, what's coming into the school systems. It's in your face. It's on the movies. It's everywhere. If you try to f rise up in this hour, there's such warfare on your personal life that it's so hard for people to rise up because they don't know how. But God's raising up people right now in this hour will help people rise up and get a revelation of who they are in Christ. How many believe that we all can do this? And, and I know there's some warriors in here. I mean, when you get when you get saved and you start walking by faith, there's an impartation of righteousness that produces a boldness that's like a lion. And so many people haven't stepped into that yet because of of whatever reason they become offended or they're ashamed. And the reason why there's so much division in the land and the churches is because when the, the truth is spoken and released, people get offended. And offense is a driving spirit. It will drive you away from God, who you are, and will establish division in your life. Does that make sense? Chester Smith used to tell me this, and it stuck with me. He said, in the world you're driven, there's forces that, that will drive you. They will appeal to your old nature, but in the kingdom we're led. And as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, right? That's what it says in Romans chapter 8, right? So, hallelujah. You can get into this realm now. Aren't you glad? And so I better get back on this message here. I was getting off all this stuff I wasn't even going to talk about. And so... I'm going to make a few statements that just came to me after I started. In the Bible it says, in, I think it's in the Psalms, that God exalts his own word above his name. He magnifies his own word above his name even. And there's something about magnification that comes through praise that will make a way for God when you magnify the Lord and you, you get a hold of a promise and I say, I thank you, Lord, for this promise. I thank you for the anointing that breaks the yoke and you praise him, you thank him for it. He inhabits the praises of his people. And, uh, and when God shows up and he, he is magnified in your spirit, in your heart, in your mind, guess what happens to your problem? Oh yeah, it's all bad for the problem, right? Your problems are gonna have problems. <laughs> when you learn how to tap into the power of magnification I'm not going there today, but I just felt like bringing that out. And uh, mercy, just a few keys here. Mercy is seen when you get eyes off of self. When you get your eyes off of yourself, you're in a position to see as mercy. Okay? And uh, that's, that's kind of hard to do sometimes for some of us, you know? I'm not saying you, but uh, anyways, I've got, I got to be careful here. <laughs> <laughs> what happens when you get eyes off, your, off, off of God and, you, and you're judging according to your own eyes? You know, you start judging things. And uh, you start saying things that's not of God, that hurts, that tears down. But, but there's something about mercy. When, when you get your eyes off of self and you get your eyes on the mercy of the Lord, that will, will empower you to have God's perspective for others. Instead of... Um, judging them, you'll try to encourage them. You'll see God's heart. Does that make sense? And Mercy is a powerful force. Mercy is like the door into the realm of His glory where you can reveal His, his heart, the heart of the Father. It's a big deal. Mercy. Aren't you glad for mercy? Yeah. What's it say in the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, 23 and 24? You guys remember that, that there in they're, they're new. They're renewed every day, right? And they endure forever. I'm telling you what, I need to live in His mercy, right? He told me that if it wasn't for His mercy, I wouldn't even be here. Because I, I was a redneck, and I ran around in Oakdale, and I thought I was a cowboy, and all this crazy stuff. I ran with a rough crowd when I was younger. And... Um, 
I'm not joking you. And um, I could tell you a lot of stories. My best friend that I hang around, hung around with, he got killed over a girl. Some guy got jealous and he was dating this girl in Waterford. He came right up and boom, shot him in the back of the head. But the Lord showed me that could have been you. It could have been me in, in a, number of, a number of cases where I was doing things and, and in places where I shouldn't have been. And even when you're not even aware, God's mercy is working. And uh, I can tell you, I was dating. I'll just share a few, a little bit. I'll be real. One time I was dating this one lady and this other guy got so jealous and he, he broke in the house and tried to murder me. No joke, I'm serious. Another time, a gangster tried to come after me with guns over a girl. And I'm not kidding you. And we've had death threats from KKK and all kinds of crazy things in the past. I could tell you all kinds of stories. And I'm thinking if it wasn't for his mercy, I might not even be here. And maybe some of you might not even be here because of his mercy. And it's because of his mercy even that we get saved. Because of his mercy, he sent his son to die, right? So that you could know him and to step into this and, and his great love. The power of mercy is a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Our, when our friends and our family, yeah, when our friends and our family mess up or people mess up, they don't need your judgment. No, they need your mercy. They need his mercy. But if your eyes aren't on, on the Lord and you're finding grace, and his grace will, will lead you into this mercy where you get in the realm of his glory, you're transformed. Does that make sense? You know, where was the blood? The blood of Jesus makes a way for you to enter into the revelation of his mercy. Where was the blood poured out in the old covenant in the tabernacle? On the mercy seat, right? And God met the priests there at that place of mercy and his glory was there. Does that make sense? His glory would manifest in a cloud, fire, and God would lead his people, shield his people, deliver his people. The Bible actually says that God leads you in mercy. I never heard that before. Anybody ever hear that? God leads you in mercy. Let me, I'll give you a verse here. Hope this is stirring you up. And, uh, oh man. Let's see, this is over in Exodus 15, uh, verse 13. Exodus 15, 13, it says, Thou in thy mercy has led forth the people which you have redeemed, Thou hast guided them in thy strength unto holy habitation. So please hear those words. He, he, this is talking about the, the ancient Israelites in the desert, how he led them out of Egypt. He, he led them through mercy. And uh, it, it was his mercy that allowed them to see that glory cloud. How many know what I'm saying there? And, and uh, it was a big deal. I mean... These guys were able to go through territories that were occupied by giants. I mean, these guys were cannibals. They would eat you and all kinds of crazy things. He fed them from heaven. He, he gave them water out of a rock. Believe me, you know, if he could take these people through the, the, through the desert, he can uphold you wherever you go. And I've discovered that. And I've stepped into this realm where I know that I know. I don't have to live by the the ways of the world because you know when you get rooted in the in the love of God you start drawing from the rivers of life and God starts strengthening you and prospering you in everything you do it's an awesome thing hallelujah how many know what I'm saying there and so many people think they're in in faith and yet they're still living like the world the Lord's calling us out of that he wants you to awaken to where you really are Say, how many really want to live by real faith where you're living as a son of God like Jesus and not like you used to be? You don't want to look like the world. You want to look like who he created you to be. And your true ministry is not going to look like much of the church. It's going to look more like Jesus. How many know what I'm saying? And 
He's trying to get a hold of me, and I'm just sharing what he's doing in my life. Hallelujah. Fire is on me. Hallelujah. Fire of the Lord. Mercy. There's power in mercy. It makes a way for you to behold his glory. And that's, that's where you have um, that transformation. And I tell people, follow the favor. When God sends you to do something, look for his favor. Because his favor will guide you uh, into a revelation of his mercy. And he'll guide you into your destiny, into those promises, and make you fruitful. A lot of people don't bear fruit. Some, you are just talking about that because their eyes are divided. They're not obedient soil. The Lord's given us his word. But are we receiving it in our spirit? Are we becoming the good soil that produces fruit? Or is the devil taking us out because we're becoming offended? Does that make sense? We get offended because the flesh is totally against who you are in Christ. Right? You may talk to somebody that wasn't a believer and their flesh acted up real quick. Maybe yours has done that. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> You know? What's that? You take your eyes off of the Lord. It doesn't take very long for you to, to, to slip back into that old nature and empower that offense. And the reason why people get offended when they hear the truth because offense is a spirit, it's an evil spirit. And it tries to separate you from the love of God and the will of God. If you really want to move forward, so many people can't move forward because they've, they've got so many things they're carrying with them from relationships. Fa father relationship, mother, brother, co-worker, it could be anything. And that stuff is in you and you have to, you, you got to make a way for the blood of Jesus to cleanse you so you can get a revelation of his mercy. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you can walk in the light as he is in the light. That's what he's trying to take us into, the light. The entrance of his word gives light, right? Psalms 119, 130. Okay. All right, I'll go a little bit more here. I'm just getting started, but... Yeah. Okay, so um, that's an interesting thing. So realize he guides you in his mercy, and his favor comes on you. And I was talking to... a to a young lady just this morning about that and you know you just got to turn to the Lord when the devil's trying to destroy you when your circumstances are trying to overtake you or your heart gets filled with hopelessness you got to turn to the Lord right and turn to the Lord he'll turn to you right you know submit yourself to him resist the enemy you can't do that apart from the Lord and the word and when you start believing and resisting, there's power in that. And it will put the enemy on the run. Please hear me. I, I know what I'm talking about. I've been seeing this for a while, but I, I can't go there today. Let me just keep going here on this mercy. Uh, so, hallelujah. And so, hear this. This is something about his mercy that ties in with the season. Hey, bro, how you doing? That we're entering into. How many know that? Jesus said a lot of things were going to happen on this planet in the last days, and it was going to be, be kind of like it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah too, right? Can't tell you what's going on right now. It's just crazy, huh? Right now, it's just ridiculous what's happening. But anyways, God showed me how his mercy rescued Lot. His mercy rescued Lot. And Abraham, who had found favor in the sight of the Lord, and who was a friend of God, when he found out what, God, what the Lord was going to do, what did he start doing? He started interceding right, right away, right? And I'm suggesting to you, there's something coming on this planet in the days ahead, and it's in the Word that God has revealed already, and he calls us his friends, right, when you get born again, that we need to start making intercession for our family and our friends if we haven't. And I, I got room for improvement, please. Please hear me. But he, he started interceding in such a way that God spared, rescued 
his family member, Lot, and their family. It's a powerful thing. Let me hear it. Let me read this to you. This is in Genesis 19:19. 19, 19. This is Lot talking. And uh, it says, Behold, now thy servant has found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which you have showed unto me in saving my life. Wow. There's something about magnification and mercy that we need to connect to and the power of intercession. Hallelujah. Something's coming on this planet. And so I'll tell you, mercy will flow like a river when you start to find grace in His sight. It, it just will. In any ways, the Lord's going to pour out a river and there's going to be a lot of mercy in that river, I believe. And uh, we need to be like Abraham because it says, as Abraham is, so shall his seed be. In the book of Romans chapter 4, we need to be like Abraham. Hallelujah. How many want to be like Abraham? Yeah. <laughs> and he was an intercessor too. Some people say, I just, I'm not no intercessor. I just, I just want to pray for somebody. That's it. Or, or just preach. No, we, we need to be intercessors too. Yeah. Hallelujah. And there's some real intercessors in here. Hallelujah. And so thank God for the blood, the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. And um, let me show you something else about mercy here as I start to get close here. Um, Genesis 39, 21. This is really interesting. How many have found yourself in a prison or a bondage of an addiction or something? Bad situation? Work environment situation? Can you identify with that? Where you've been? Yeah. You, you see these, these lies of the patriarchs, they're prophetic. Please hear me. History, biblical history is prophecy. Like these patriarchs, like Abraham, his life is prophetic. It was, and it can produce in your life too. Joseph's life was prophetic. And, uh, and so history is also prophecy. That's something that I've been learning. But hear here what it says here um, concerning Joseph. I mean, Joseph had a dream, had a vision, right? He spoke that word out, and, and his, his family got so jealous. It's about time. Please hear me. They get jealous, right? Mm -hmm. The devil gets jealous. He doesn't want you to touch anything that has authority. Does that make sense? He'll use your own family to put you in a prison house if he can, or kill you. Well, I, I, I got to be careful there, but that could preach, you know, right? And but don't get me wrong. You know, he'll use your family to save you too. I mean, it, it could it could be either way. You know what I'm saying? But what happened to him? They sold him into slavery. He ended up, you know, the story of Joseph, right? He was in prison. Uh, but you know what? He was always focused on the Lord. He was spending time with the Lord. And one thing I've learned is a lot of people lose sight of the favor that comes from His face, the grace, the mercy, because they don't spend time with the Lord. If you don't spend time with the Lord and pray and, and, and have that relationship, you may miss out on that mercy that will save your life or bless you or something. Does that make sense? He was always fixed on the Lord. He had that vision. He knew that he knew. How many have had a vision from the Lord and you know that God's called you? He's created you for something. Doesn't matter if you end up in some place ugly. It looks like you're, you're done. If the devil tries to kill you, you've got to remember you're a seed. You'll spring right back up, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's the truth. You've been trying to kill me every week for years, and I, I'm still here. <laughs> Not joking, man. It looks like I've been done over and over and over, but His grace will make a way. He is a way maker. His mercy will make a way for you to go in a way that, that God goes with you. And if God is with you, who can be against you, right? Nobody can be against you when you... And guess what? This is something that nobody can do for you, but you, you have to put your eyes on the Lord. Have that heart like David. 
don't run like the armies of Israel. Uh, you know, it, there was something about his his mercy that just it turned David into another man, right? He went out and took out a giant when he was a young guy. Teenager, I think. Right? right? Hit him with a, a rock, right? How many believe we need to hit some things with a rock, right? Yeah. Yeah, what was it? What was it about King Saul that caused him to lose the anointing of the kingdom? He took matters in his own hands. Right? David was singing to the Lord. He was praising the Lord, and and when nobody was around, yeah. So you take matters in your own hand. You'll lose the anointing on your life. It won't operate. And and I see that. That's why there's such a lack of power in the church, because people are taking things in their own hand and trying to make things happen. It just don't work that way. Where God says, Jesus says, I give you the keys of the kingdom that you can open and close and bind and loose. But guess what? That's a living revelation. Jesus is here in the clouds. He's here, you know, in your life. And he gives it to you. When he gives it to you, you're, you're, the, you're the gateway, so to speak, to release and to close and to bind. Uh, you know, you've got to speak that from the realm of the heart, the realm of revelation of the Lord. Does that make sense? He has given it to you already. Doesn't mean you can use it anytime you want or any way you want. It gets into religion and witchcraft. But when you do it, when the Lord directs you, guess what? You're going to open up uh, heavenly atmospheres over your life. You can keep the heavens on, open on your life, like what we're saying here, or you can close it. How many know what I'm saying? How many have had closed heavens on your life? Don't raise your hand. Okay, okay. I'll raise mine. Hey, you can open that, you open that key or you can close it. But there's something about how you think in your spirit and what you speak. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. That's why the devil's trying to possess everybody because he wants to reign on this earth and keep mankind from uh, the dominion God created them to have. And uh, we've got to be careful what comes out of our mouth and not to speak out of self, uh, but speak out of who you are in Christ. I'm telling you what, the, the devil is going to be in trouble before it's all done. The Lord told me the day of reckoning has come uh, for the kingdom of darkness. The sons of God are being raised up in this hour. It's a big deal. And the, and the sons know who they are. They're going to... They're going to pay whatever it, it, it price it takes to get into what I'm talking about. The Lord showed me the kingdom, you know, the gift of salvation is free, but it costs. I mean, remember Catherine Coleman, she would, she would say it costs more than, <laughs> you know, it's going to cost you everything you are in this world to get into this realm of this glory that he, he's opened up for you to walk in. It's okay, and he'll, his grace will meet you his favor will meet you right where you are and will lead you into this, this awareness of his kingdom, his power. His, how many know he, you know, he led, the, he led those by who he had redeemed by his mercy and his power. You've been given, what have you been given? Spirit of power, not fear, right? Fear will rob you, huh? And a, a spirit of love and a sound mind. And the power of God will empower you to live as a son and to keep uh, walking in covenant with the Lord and have a mind that believes like a son and not like you used to do in the world. And there's a way to live and move and have your being in Him. And it's not the way that, that you think it may be unless you've entered into it. Does that, know, does that make sense? When I see God show up, it's always in a way that I didn't, I didn't realize. I didn't think him, he was going to do things this way. He always does things that are beyond my, my understanding or expectation sometimes. It's awesome. Kingdom, his ways are higher than our ways, his thoughts, than our thoughts. He's calling us into this realm. He wants to pour out on you. When, the, when, you, when your eyes draw to the Lord, you draw the attention of heaven... And, uh, and you make a way for the Lord to pour out 
you know, revelation from heaven that will pull you out of your ways and into his ways. Isaiah 55. Yeah, it's such a powerful thing. Let me just go a little bit more here. I don't think I can get to, to everything here today. Uh, but I'll just say this. As God leads you, you will be transformed into a house of mercy. You will be transformed into such a state where you become like the tabernacle of David. You become an individual individually, a house, and also corporate. There's corporate anointings. How many have ever had an encounter with a corporate of anointing when you get into a place that was like-hearted? Most people know what it's like to be in a dead a corporate, a corporate dead realm, yep. but there's something called the anointing yep. that, that, that will magnify and multiply and put the devil on the run. How many, Kim, you know this, we talk about this, how many can one put, put on the run? One of them, chase 100, two of chase 1,000, three chase 10,000. There's something about unity that is really powerful. And the Lord's trying to align us to his heart so that we can live as sons. I don't know about you, but sometimes I get my eyes off of him and I try to do what I see in the world and I get out of alignment. But if you align your heart to his heart, you make a way for him to lead you. And when you get into this realm, things will start to manifest and, and start to grow and you start to think like a son more than you used to think. He's aligning our hearts. There's power in unity. That's why the enemy tries to use offense. Because offense will make you weak. Offense uh, weakens. Offense, what the offense does, it, it gives strength to the flesh, but it weakens the body. It's truth. And I've given too much strength to my flesh. You know, it's not your flesh that saves you. It's not your, your, you know, who you were born out of, you know, in the world, your family tree, or even the will of man. Uh, no, it's the will of God that you're born. And uh, the flesh has to come into alignment with this. And that's, the only way that happens is through death. It's through the cross, right? We, we can't do anything apart from the sacrifice of the, the cross of our Lord. Hallelujah. Anyways, I've I got to keep going here. Let me just uh, stir you up here a little bit.